Hello everyone, Daz here, and in this video we're going to look at how to take full advantage of Slider Revolution's Color Selection dialog box. Here I've opened the Barbershop Barbers template into the module editor. This is a nice business focused template with a clean white background for us to adjust. The right side of the template is an image, but so that we can demo our color changes in multiple ways, I've replaced that with a nice big USC gold colored shape layer. To change the color on a layer, select the layer, then click Style. In the background source panel, click anywhere inside the BG color field. This will display the color selection dialog box. To change the color on a background layer, select the slide options tab. The background subsection will display by default. Just like with the layer, the source panel here has a BG color field. Again, click anywhere in the field to bring up the color selection dialog box. Depending on whether you're changing a background layer or a standard layer, you'll access the color selection dialog box from a different area of the module editor, but in both cases, the options in the dialog box remain the same. The dark gray area along the top of the window is the top bar. To reposition it, left click and hold anywhere in the top bar other than near the color type field, then move the box and release your mouse button wherever you'd like to place it. On the right of the top bar, you can see the currently editing status, which tells us we're currently editing the background color. The color type option has two buttons there. The teardrop icon, which is highlighted blue to indicate it's currently selected, is the option to choose if you're making changes to a flat color. The checkered icon is the option to choose if you're making changes to a gradient. Notice that when I select it, the color selection dialog box's options now include the extra options needed for modifying gradients. We'll go over editing gradients later in the video, but for now, let's click the flat color option again, and we'll work through its options, as once you have a good grasp on the flat color options, the more detailed gradient option panel becomes much simpler to understand. Below the top bar, we have the color input section. The first field there is the color field, which shows your currently selected color, as well as that color represented as a hex code. Hex codes are six character codes used in web design and other graphic design programs all the time. If you know the hex code of a color that you want to use, you can type it into this field. You don't need to type in the hash as Slider Revolution will automatically add this for you once you press enter. The RGB field shows your color as three separate numbers where each number represents red, green, and blue respectively. Like hex codes, RGB codes are also commonly used in web design and other graphic design. And as you probably noticed, when I updated the hex code, the values in each of these RGB fields also automatically updated to reflect that change. If you know the RGB values of the color you want, you can type them in directly. Double click in the first field to highlight the current value, and then type your new value over it. Press tab to move your cursor to the second field. Slider Revolution will automatically highlight the value there for you, so you can just type over it. Press tab again to go to the third field and type in the final value. So now our color is automatically updated to reflect the RGB code I entered. From here, you can press enter to leave the RGB field, or you can press tab again to jump to the opacity field below. Opacity determines how transparent your color is. You can type a percentage directly into this field if you like. A value of 100% represents a solid color, while 0% represents a completely transparent color. The opacity field is also linked to the rightmost slider of our color inputs area. Modifying the percentage in the opacity field will change the position of the opacity slider, and modifying the slider will change the percentage in the opacity field to reflect your change. Basically, drag the slider down for more transparency, or drag it up for less. Below the opacity field we have the clear color button, which is also linked to the opacity field. This button exists to make it fast and simple to set a transparent value if you decide you don't want any color at all. Clicking it sets all color variables to zero, and you can see the opacity slider is also set to zero now. You can see the slider to the left of the opacity slider has been set to zero as well. This is the saturation slider, which allows you to adjust how much white is mixed into your color. Obviously saturation has no bearing if you have a transparent color, so if I slide the saturation slider even just a little bit, Slider Revolution will automatically adjust opacity from zero to 100% to allow us to see our color being displayed. Bear in mind, Slider will only do this if you try to adjust saturation after having clicked the clear color button. The higher you move the saturation slider, the more vivid your color will appear. The lower your saturation, the more soft or pastel your colors will appear. Each slider adjustment you make will be rendered in real time, and you can see the hex code and RGB values of your change displayed in real time too. 
You'll also see the changes to your color values if you decide to pick a color using the hue and lightness box. That's the box you see here in the middle of the color inputs area. Hue is basically another name for color. The lightness part refers to how much black is mixed into your color, which you can determine by dragging the circular indicator up or down in the box. Drag it down for darker colors, drag it up for lighter colors. All right, those are all the options in the color input section. Below that, we have the preset section of the dialog box, so let's look at that now. Presets allow you to save colors to reuse them later. The first field there is the preset group, which is currently set to defaults. The default presets are pre-filled with a collection of colors ready for you to use, which you can see in the four rows to the right. If you click on the preset group drop-down list, you can see the alternative selection is custom. This is where all your own custom presets are saved. Right now it's blank as I haven't created a custom preset, so let's create one now. To do that, pick a color that you like by using the color input section. Once you're happy, go to the save preset field and give your color a name. You can't put spaces in your color name, so use a hyphen to separate two words if you need to. Then click the save preset button to save your preset. You'll now see your color in the list of presets on the right. If you don't want the preset you've saved, you can click the little X in the top corner of your color preset, then click OK on the confirmation box that is displayed. If we go back to the defaults list, you can also use this to create a custom color. Click on one of the default colors, then adjust it as you see fit. Give your color a name in the Save Preset field, then click Save Preset again. You'll notice the preset group drop-down still reads defaults, but on the right we can see our custom color has been added. This is normal because the drop-down list is one that can only be changed by you manually. Don't worry, the default presets haven't changed. If you want them back, just click on the drop-down and select defaults again. If you want to see your custom colors, just click the drop-down and select custom again. If you don't have a need for the preset section, you can click the up arrow button that you see here on the right side of the selection box and that will close the preset section. The presets icon will then change to a palette, which you can again click on to expand the preset section. On the bottom of the dialog box, you can see the color skin option. This option exists to help you quickly change the colors of templates that have a color skin applied to them. Color skins apply to the whole module and you can create color skins yourself if you want to, but since doing so is a whole tutorial in and of itself, we'll leave this set to off and cover it in detail in a future video. For now, let's say we're happy with our background color. To commit that change, all you have to do is click on the blue tick button. The dialog box will close when you do that. Remember, always click save once you've made a change that you'd like to keep as well. Okay, let's move on to gradients. For that, let's click on our USC gold layer. As we learned at the start of the tutorial to adjust the color of any non-background layer, open the style subsection of the layer options tab, then click in the BG color field. This time, click on the gradient color type option. And let's just click a default color to make it stand out a bit more. Now that we've been over all the options available in the color inputs and presets section, the additions to the color selection dialog box for editing gradients are a lot easier to spot. We have a new gradient editing section at the top, and our option for adjusting opacity has moved from the color input section into the gradient editing section. And that's all that has changed. In the top right corner of the gradient editing section is the gradient preview box. You can't actually interact directly with the preview box, it's purely a window that shows you an accurate representation of how the gradient you're creating currently looks. But for the purpose of our tutorial, you can compare it to the layer on the right that we're actually editing, just so that you can see the gradient in the preview box matches the gradient in our actual layer. The window to the left of that is the gradient stop editor. A stop is what we call the individual points of color or opacity that a gradient transitions between. Each of these four house-shaped points that you see on either corner of the stop editor are our stops. The two stops at the top are for modifying opacity. The two stops at the bottom are for modifying color. To modify a stop, all you have to do is select it. To change the value of an opacity stop, select the one you want to change and then modify the percentage number you see in the opacity field below. To change the value of a color stop, select it and then make whatever color changes you want using the color input section below, just like we learned how to do earlier in this video. Additional changes can be made to how the gradient behaves. The first of those options are these three gradient type boxes. Selecting the leftmost gradient type box will give you a horizontal linear gradient. Selecting the middle box will switch to a vertical linear gradient. 
Selecting the third gradient type box will apply an elliptical gradient. To the right of the gradient types you can see a control for modifying the angle of your gradient. Simply click and drag it until you have the desired angle on your gradient that you want, or you can just type the degree of your angle directly into the gradient angle field. You can also flip your gradient by clicking the reverse gradient toggle. The gradient easing field allows you to quickly change how the colors in your gradient transition between stops. There are numerous presets you can experiment with in the easing drop down menu. To the right of that is the strength field. The percentage in this field modifies how much of an influence on your grading the easing selection has. Again, select an easing setting, then play around with the strength percentage until you get a look that you like. And finally, you can increase the complexity of your gradient by adding more stops. If you want to add more color stops, hover your mouse cursor near the bottom of the gradient editor where you would like to add a new stop, and then left click. If you want to add more opacity stops, it's the same process as adding more color stops, only this time you hover your mouse at the top of the gradient editor. You can also reposition any stop you would like by clicking on it and dragging it to a different position. If you want to remove a stop, just select it and then click on the trash can icon. And that's everything you need to know about how to use the color selection dialog box. Thanks for watching and enjoy using Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now. The world's most powerful WordPress builder.